major breaking news uh, related to open AI. Steve Kovac joins us now. Uh, this is a stunner uh, in some respects, Steve. Yeah, Sam Altman is out as CEO of OpenAI. We just got this announcement, Scott. Um, I'll read you directly uh, from the release, uh, the board saying, quote, Mr. Altman's departure follows a deliberative review process by the board, which concluded that he was not consistently candid in his communications with the board, hindering its ability to exercise responsibility. The board no longer has confidence in his ability to continue leading leading OpenAI. No details about what was said or what wasn't said or what this communication was about. They are naming their chief technology office, officer, Mira Marathi, as a interim CEO for the time being. But of course, this has more implications beyond just OpenAI. Uh, Microsoft, of course, major investor in OpenAI, owning a significant part of that company as well. I've reached out to Microsoft for comment, and I'll get back to you if we hear anything, Scott. Well, I mean, I can just tell you as we're having this conversation, uh, Steve, that, you know, the minute this thing started to filter out, Microsoft shares started to fall. Yeah. Uh, they're down near 2% now, I suppose, for obvious reasons, um, because of that relationship that these two companies, which uh, have had, which, let's be honest, um, put Microsoft into the driver's seat. Oh, yeah, uh, in, in, in the way in the way that uh, the market has taken it from from step one. Yeah, and, and Sam Altman was very much the face of this company, right? He was just uh, at the Apex Summit, meeting with everyone there, along with the top tech CEOs, including Satya Nadella, including uh, folks like Apple's Tim Cook. So he is, you know, very much at the forefront of this com uh, company. He was. I was in uh, Congress, Scott, back in May. He was the one who testified in front of Congress, talking about AI regulation. He's the guy to go to. He has been at the forefront front of this AI boom we've been seeing uh, more than any other company, more than any other person, and he is now out. Uh, of course, we're dying for details of what exactly happened here, but, you know, up until this week, he was still uh, the face of the company and really out there promoting uh, this technology. Just, uh, you know, even just a week ago, they had a, a big event, and he was there giving the keynote speech in a very, like, Steve Jobsian way, uh, showing new features for uh, what's coming at OpenAI and ChatGPT. So um, it's unclear what the future is here, but, yeah, you see Microsoft now down 2% on this news, Scott. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the sort of broader implications, too, just again of, of how, you know, big these stocks are and the weightings that they have in, in the different indices. If you're, you know, the Dow, for example, we were wondering, okay, are we going to make a run at positive territory? Well, Dow's now down 28 points. It was a somewhat muted day to begin with, but now you have the biggest point uh, contributor to the downside in Microsoft shares, which are taking about $70 dollars or so uh, off of uh, the Dow as it relates here. It's going to be interesting to see what happens from this, uh, Stephen, in the broader context, what you think this might mean to Microsoft's efforts as uh, Alphabet's made it clear, too, uh, that they're not willing to take a backseat to anybody and they're going to spend whatever they have to and do whatever right. they have to do to close whatever perceived gap. Uh, exist, or at least the one that the market has already voted on exists by virtue of what Microsoft shares have done, which have been hitting an all-time high almost every day this week. Yeah, and it, it's not just that. Like, Google has not just fallen behind, but it actually had to delay its product reportedly, uh, this Gemini product that was supposed to compete with the latest and greatest chat GPT product. That has been delayed, so still behind. But look, this is great news for Google. I don't know if we have Alphabet shares up here and see how they're reacting, but um, at the same time, you also got to look at what's been going on at OpenAI. They're talk, they're, they literally crashed because they had so much uh, people, so many people signing up for their latest products that they just announced this month. So there is momentum there. They have so many users. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's going. They still are the top of the game and still perceived as the leader. It's unclear, but so much of that again, Scott, was tied to Sam Altman as the figurehead and face of the company, and now he's out. And yeah, the Alphabet down about one percent here. It looks like Scott. Yeah, incredible. I mean, the valuation of that company has just absolutely exploded. And they're trying to over, raise even more. Over the last year, right? I mean, they, they went from near um, a $90 billion, well, whatever they went from. I can't remember how low the valuation was, but a year ago to near $90 billion now. That tells you what the excitement is around this and company. And revenue, Scott. They're actually selling stuff and actually bringing in sales, unlike so many early startups that are pre-revenue or no revenue. Uh, there's money coming into this company, not just from investors. And um, Sam Altman, by the way, gave an a interview, I believe it was with the Financial Times just a few days ago, saying 
he's willing to go back to Microsoft for more funding. So uh, they, this is still a very active company. And uh, without Sam Altman, it's unclear uh, if they have that kind of leadership mojo uh, that, they, that they would need to continue up this momentum and this leadership position that they have, not just for themselves, but also for Microsoft. It's so funny. <laughs> this is how everything works. We're, hitting, we're here, sitting here talking about you know, this uh, you know, stunner of a story. We're talking about what it means for Microsoft and, and Alphabet and the like. And of course, I said I couldn't remember exactly what the valuation was back then. So what did I do? I Googled it. And of course, it comes up. It was $29 billion in April to near $90 billion around now. It's just, you know, a, a real sign at how meteoric this company's uh, emergence, Steve, has been. Yeah, and it's not just these kind of fake valuations that we hear from so many startups. You know, I think there's one called Character AI that makes no revenue and it's not, you know, as advanced as what we've been seeing. Uh, there are talks that, that has a $5 billion valuation. Um, this is also really good news, Scott, for Anthropic, which doesn't get as much attention as OpenAI and ChatGPT, but its, its product, Claude, which is its version of ChatGPT, is also very capable and very advanced and right up there neck and neck with um, what ChatGPT is able to do. Of course, there's that Amazon investment into Anthropic to kind of boost that as well. But look, this is uh, this made the horse race, uh, so to speak, between all these AI companies just uh, really tighten up again without this leader, Scott. Yeah, all right. Well, I appreciate you bringing us this news and uh, rolling with all this on the fly. Let us know if you have anything else over the next 15 minutes or, of course, in overtime <laughs> you as it. we turn the clock. Steve Kovac, thank you very much.